Uh, Walmart. Requires service on gold or platinum unlimited. One offer per hour. Eligible account plus essential plan only separate registration required. Additional terms apply. Hi, this is Scott Trout of Cordell and Cordell. There are a lot of great dads out there. Sometimes those dads get divorced. For more than 30 years, we have represented men in divorce, confronting the pitfalls that could devastate your finances or harm your family relationships. While every situation is different, our goal is to get the best outcome for you and your kids. Visit CordellCordell.com to take the first step. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell & Cordell's Springfield area attorneys. 2815 Old Jacksonville Road, Suite 103, Springfield, Illinois, 62704. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Edgy Tim is here. Coach Rod is here. The best high school football fans in the state are here. It's time for Pigskin Preview. Coaches, players, fans, and experts. You get them all right here on Big Skin Preview. Powered by State Farm agents Kevin Malloy and John Wright. And good evening and welcome. It is the quarterfinal round edition of Pig Skin Preview here on 1340 WJOL. Will County's News Talk Sports. Edgy Tim here along with the coach Joe Rodigaro, Evan Bredesen spinning the dials and... Joe, this edition and every edition of Pigskin Preview brought to you by our State Farm agents, Kevin Malloy in New Lenox and John Wright in Joliet, like a good neighbor, Joe. State Farm is there. And again, our broadcast schedule this weekend is as follows. Well, since there's only one Friday game in the entire state of Illinois, it won't be here. So we will be with you Saturday, 3 o'clock, live. From Morris War Memorial Stadium. Okay, I know it's not called that, but I'm, I'm trying to hype it up. The opening music got me a little jacked up. I'm excited. Uh, Jolie Catholic, 23 miles, makes the trip, Joe. Yep. Over to Morris. Jolie Catholic and Morris going at it yet another time. And yes, sir. I think we're all hoping for a big game, and, and, and certainly, uh, well, I think we expect Epic every time they both get together. Yes. <laughs> so, so that is your game of the week. Uh, Evan Bredesen and Joe Rodigaro on the call. Um, no PT, huh? No, no PT. No PT. No PT. All right. No PT Dwyer this week. You have Evan Bredesen driving you home in the, in the lead chair. And, and again, should be a terrific ball yes. game. Joe, it's going to be such a darn good ball game. I'm going as well. Oh, no. So now we've got, now we've got the tripod, the tripod going. I hit more. So, oh. We will all Watch invade out. Morris on Saturday at 3 o'clock. So looking forward. Joe, as I told you, I've been looking forward to getting back to Morris this year and uh, wanted to earlier in the year. It just didn't happen, and right. schedule didn't work out that way. But, yep, going to Morris and excited. You can't you can't go for a better game than Morris and Joe A. Catholic. So, again, six, uh, 3 o'clock kickoff. I'll definitely be out there early take in the sights and the scenes and the smells and everything else. And it, it should be a, a blast. You can catch that game right here on 1340 WJOL, uh, WJOL.com as well as uh, get the Odyssey app by all means. And just listen, uh, listen uh, on the WJOL app, which uh, I do quite often now. So again, I highly recommend it. Um, full guest list tonight. Uh, we've got open phones for right now. So 815-254-7300. Uh, Jeff Reitz will join us from Wilmington. Of course, uh, Wilmington on the road at number one Seneca, Joe. It's the rematch. It's the rematch of week one. So I know everyone in Wilmington's fired up about that game. We'll talk to Jeff about that ball game. Rob Zavonar from Lincoln Way East. The Griffins pack up the uh, the Army, the infantry unit, and hit the road, and they go up to uh, Gurney. Uh, not to ride the rides, but to take care of hopefully business against uh, uh, Warren Township. Uh, that game is also Saturday. That's a night game, Joe, seven o'clock. Oh, wow. So yeah, they're that one of the few night games, I think on Saturday as well. So that will be a huge ball game, huge crowd. We'll also talk to Jake Jaworski. Uh, Jaws will be with us at about seven Oh five. Obviously we'll, we'll, we'll break down JCA and Morris. 
Then Tyler Plants will join us at 745. Joe, we will talk Providence Catholic and the Highland Bulldogs. That game also on Saturday. Joe? Yes, sir. Let's go out to the phone lines. Bob joins us. Hello, Bob. What's up, guys? Well, you got to hit the road and go into enemy territory on Saturday at Morris. We'll be there with you. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, be we'll watch right. out for you. We'll watch out for you. How about the Sacred Heart game? I mean, the Sacred Heart would have had another minute. I think they would have been in trouble. Yeah, either team, either team could stop each other. Yeah, it was, it, uh, it was, it it was, was definitely a back and forth game. A, yeah, it was definitely a back and forth game for sure. And uh, Joe, well, and, and again, we're not going to have Alan Thorson on, unfortunately. But sounds like sounds like Morris got banged up a little bit in that ball game. Yeah, a couple players got hurt, key players. But uh, I am sure that they're going to play in this game. Uh, it, 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 it's it, it, it's the yeah. biggest game of the year down there yeah. so far. Yep, and they'll be ready for Joliet Catholic. Yeah. Oh, I'm, no. Any dead horse is going to get up and play for that one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, do you tailgate at Morris? No, no. There's some of the guys that are going down to tailgate, but I don't. Yeah, I, I just, I'll, I'll never forget, Bob. You've been to a lot of those big games as well, but I'll never forget. The, you know what game I'm talking about, Jolie Catholic fans, the one in Morris. Yes. We won't get too much into details. I don't want to mention the name of one specific player. Can I kind of? I will. Joe. Kind, of, kind of triggers a lot of you. Yeah, Joe. No, don't don't no, hit the button. No, no, don't trigger a lot. I don't want to trigger you guys. I, I but... that, that first touch they got, he pulled our guy's shirt right <laughs> off his back, and they never called it. I I I, I just remember over and over. I just remember. I just remember before the game. The line of people waiting to get in. Yeah, to you know what time they're going to open the gates for that place? No. Yeah, I imagine if they're going to open about one o'clock. Yeah, I. We could try to find that out. I could try to find. I'll, Bob, I'll try to find that out on the commercial break. I'll let you know. All right. I'm sure they'll have some ticket information, but uh, yeah. So again, we're going to talk about the game. We'll have Jaws on a little bit later. We'll break it down. He'll be on at seven o five, and we'll get into it a little bit. But it should be a great game. Oh yeah, I think so. All right, Bob. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. All right, I'm back out to the phone lines. Joe, Mike from Joliet. Hello, Mike. Hey, Edgy and uh, Joey, how are you today? Good, pal. How are you? All right, yeah, thanks. Uh, Another great job this year. Sorry I wasn't able to listen as much as I wanted. You guys are just awesome. I have uh, two comments. Oh, by the way, gates open 1.30 on Saturday at Morris. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, Anyway, I have two comments. Number one is I feel... That they should be, the HSA should be seeding the uh, Class 5A, I guess, much like whatever they do in the other classes. To do it like they're doing now, yes. it was really unfair to Peoria to have to play Julia Catholic in the first, in the first game. Agreed. Uh, I think things would have been much better, and I think they ought to abandon the North and South uh, stuff as well. But a second comment, I'd like to have you guys weigh in on these two comments. The second comment is, uh, and this may feel sound strange coming from me, but I think the time is now that they should split up the Catholic schools. I, call, I should say private schools with hey, the public just call, schools. Just call, it, read what it, where I, call it what it is. Call what it is. That's what I start <laughs> doing. And Mike, and, 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 and I think it's very simple. I think you 5A through, well, you may include some schools in 4A, maybe something like Montini. Montini in 3A is a joke. But anyway, um, uh, you take all, there's 49 private schools. Uh, you have probably eight schools in the big class of, of private and the rest of them in the smaller class. And then you have the, those two classes of all the public schools. Okay. And, you know, that's how you divide it up. Uh, right. I'll, I'll wait for your guys' yeah. comments. You probably talked about it before, but I think the time is now. So, okay. take away, you guys. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Joe, um... As far as the seating part of it is concerned, I, I think you meant more of the bracketing with yes. one through thirty-two versus six A and below is geographical. And right. There's no argument. This is just yet another of many examples that we've had that just does not work and should not work in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I don't. You're understand. being punished for where you live. Is what you're being yes. being done. You're being punished. And if you're not, and if you're in a, and if you're in a quote unquote good region, you're being rewarded. Just because of where you live, right? It's ridiculous. So I totally agree with that, Mike. And then, as far as the separation, I, Joe, I've said for a while. I think it's coming. I think it's coming. I, I think the moment 
the moment it gets brought up for a member wide vote, it happens. I think it'll pass. Well, I, I mentioned to you guys before we even came on the air, I just did a little research and there's 32 teams left, Mike, and half of them are private Catholic. schools. Catholic. <laughs> Catholics. And, and again, Mike, Mike does the same thing I do. I was okay. Well, I don't want to, how many non-Catholic private schools are there? I would just say a, hope a, kid a couple, a couple, right? Yeah. So they're basically Catholic schools is who they're going after. Yes. Evan. I mean, as far as the, the separation goes, it's something that I know has been, been talked about, but if you're the Catholic schools and, and that, and that issue does get brought up, What's to stop you from just telling the IHSA, well, Nothing. if that's the way you're going to be fine, we're going to leave and we'll form our own association. Why split the money with you guys if you're not going to, if you're going to hold us to, you know, different standards, we'll go do our own thing. Do you want to put up with the headache of doing your own thing? I think they would be willing to. It's possible. If the IHSA did that to them, yeah, I think there are quite a few people that would be willing to to try to stick it back to the IHSA. I think you would find that there would be people who would be very willing to at least attempt to do that. Yeah, that's fair. I think there'd be some in-house fighting, though, too. I mean, I just— 100%. That, oh, absolutely. That, that, it's that, always that, a that power struggle, no matter what. Yeah, power struggles. Um, so we'll see. Um, Mike, I, I, I don't see it happening right away. Uh, there's another thing out there that we should dig into, and we're not going to have the time tonight. Most likely is uh, districts is oh, all of a sudden coming, gosh. making a return visit. <laughs> same proposal, same examples, but it's making a comeback. And you want to bet the dummies are going to vote for it again? I'll bet you. I'll bet you they'll vote for it again. They won't. They don't even know what it's going to look like, like the last time. Yes, and they'll vote for it. And, and some, it'll pass. And some of those districts. Yes, I call them dummies. Thank you. In some of those districts. I don't know if I'd want to be in some of these districts where you no. the travel is going to be unbelievable. Yeah, like Manuka. Manuka. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> Greg know. from Tinley. Sorry, Greg. We're, we're venting a little bit, but uh, thanks for hanging in there with us. Oh, no problem. You guys are hot tonight. I love it. <laughs> uh, I do have a couple of, uh, com I do have a comment sure. and a question for you, though, yep. about last week. I just wanted to say I was at the Manuka East game, and I want to say Manuka really put their butts off that first half. Uh, their defense really deserves a lot of credit, and uh, I think that program could be going someplace in the future. Uh, I love the gold helmets too. I got to tell you, <laughs> those things were great. And uh, I have a comment to make about uh, defensive backs and how they're playing these days. I can't tell you how many times this year I've been to games where defensive backs get get turned around and don't look back for the ball. The quarterback rows it short, and the uh, you know there's a pass interference right. penalty. So free, free first down. What are, You talk to these coaches. What are, Don't they teach them to turn around and look for the ball? Greg, it's all yours, Coach Joe. They do. It, what happens is, is the many, many years that I did coach football, even baseball, I still, kids panic. They, they know the techniques they're supposed to do, and they see a guy run by them, and they they just panic, and they just run right at the receiver, and that's where you get a lot of pass interference calls. Um, yeah. some, sometimes I feel that defensive backs give too much cushion off off uh -huh. the line of scrimmage. And but to yeah. your question, I just think kids panic too much, and yeah. and they just don't want to be that guy that gets beat deep, and when they do get a step or two behind them. They panic and just start running with them and just hope the ball's overthrown or, or underthrown. Yeah. I, I also want to get your thoughts, Joe, on, on Manuka defense because obviously you guys did the game, and I know you had some thoughts about Manuka defensively. Greg, I, I totally agree with you. They, they put up a gallant effort, I think, even the entire oh, yeah. game. They just got tired in the second half. But their first half, right. and I can say this now, um, one of their defensive linemen was not there, and I thought they, they mm. did a great job of using the three down linemen, bringing the two outside yeah. linebackers up, almost looking like a five, two and basically Darren Lincoln way used to throw the football and, and they, and yeah. they really stuffed the run. I thought in the first half, very effectively. And you're right. They played their butts off. And, and oh. I know there was another young man who was hurting. We thought he was not going to play, but he did play. And you could tell toward the end of the game, he was struggling mightily out there. And, um, <laughs> But yeah, I, yeah. I give kudos also to, uh, to, to Manuka's defense. They were, and they were Mike, or I should say, Greg, they were that way all year. 
I saw Manuka. This was the fourth uh-huh. time now, and they were outstanding the entire year. Uh, Greg, the Greg, the the knock on Manuka the last handful of years is offensively. They just they just have yeah. not been able to really open up that offense, and and they've paid the price when they get into the playoffs. And if 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 they can, Joe, I'm telling you, yeah. if they could settle. You get one of those baseball kids maybe comes over and plays quarterback. I, I think it makes a world of difference because you've seen some of their skills. You got Donovan Anderson and you got guys yeah, you got that, some players out that are big time players and you just got to give them the ball. I mean, Nathan Mall, I thought did a terrific job this year, but you know, to win an eight A and make a deep run, you, you got to have that, that high level signal caller and, and Manuka just hasn't had that yet. Yeah. And up against East defense. No, they're so, yeah. <laughs> They're so they're yeah, brutal they're, against the that run. front four yeah, on Friday throw. night. Every time the mall kid, I mean, his three step drop early in the game, quick throws were very good. But once he went to a five step drop or a seven step drop, he had no time at all. Though that front yeah, four is they, outstanding for Lincoln Way East. That's right. They, they'll come in if you get if you get third and long. <laughs> you know, batting down the hatches. Yeah, yeah I, I totally yeah. agree with you. All right, Greg. Thanks. Okay, boys. All right. All right, Greg drops out. By the way, we'll answer a question real quick before we go to commercial here. Uh, Ryan Prosser on on YouTube. And by the way, we're streaming live on YouTube. Hello, everybody. Uh, Do you think Warren can score a TD against Lincoln Way East? Yeah. The final will be 7-6. Lincoln Way East wins. (laughs) So the answer is two questions in one, Ryan. Yeah, that's going to be a low-scoring game, I believe, Ryan. We hope. Yes. We'll see. There's a couple of us in the studio that don't have a great feel, so we're looking forward to talking to Coach Z at about 6.45, and hopefully Coach Z can can fire us up a little bit. But uh, step aside, take a break. When we come back, we will go out to the phone lines. We will actually talk to Jeff Reince about your Wilmington Wildcats who hit the road this week and head to Seneca. This is the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk Sports. Will County Seniors, a nonprofit organization serving senior citizens and their families, has provided resources and programming to senior citizens in the county since 1966. Through a variety of activities and support services, Will County Seniors helps adults over 55 maintain their independent, active lifestyle. As our community has grown over the decades, so have our services to the families of seniors. The next phase of Will County Seniors will be the opening of the Ovation Center in Romeoville. The over 100,000 square foot ovation Center will serve as a gathering place for seniors and a place where seniors and their families can go for valuable services. Leasing offices within the Ovation Center provide an ideal opportunity for businesses or service organizations that work with seniors and their families, such as medical offices or massage therapy or professional services, including legal, financial, and insurance services. For more information about leasing space for your growing business in the Ovation Center, visit theovationcenter.org. That's theovationcenter.org. Paid for by Christian Care Ministry. So right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care. And here's why. Not only is it open enrollment for a lot of people, it's also a time you can join MediShare and save even more than usual. For many families, switching to MediShare saves about $500 a month, which is a game changer for a lot of people. But what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the member satisfaction rate compared to health insurance. Double. MediShare is a proven thing, too. For over 30 years, it's a Christian community of more than 400,000 members. And here's the thing, too. If you join before November 15th and you mention the promo code SHARE, you'll get another $150 savings. So I'll give you the number here in a second, but just call. You'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline's November 15th. So call now and you'll save even more. Here's the number, 855-51-BIBLE. That's 855-51-BIBLE, 855-51-BIBLE. The Senior Spotlight is heard every other Monday at 9.30 a.m. Produced just for seniors. Sponsored by Old National Bank. News, interviews, events, happenings, medical and financial advice, senior citizen activities. Fun stuff and so much more. We will check into assisted living, rehab facilities, and over 55 housing communities. The Senior Spotlight, brought to you by Old National Bank. Every other Monday at 9.30 a.m. What is happening with and for seniors in Joliet and Will County? Right here on 1340 WJOL. Will County's News Talk Sports. Miller Lodge presents your Chicago football game day headquarters. Pelican Harry's and Homer Glenn. 
catch all the game day action this Thursday night as Seattle invades Chicago at Pelican Harry's. Featuring a Philly cheese sandwich with a side for $6.95 and your chance to win an autographed Chicago football jersey at the end of the game. No purchase necessary. And all of the action on 22 televisions throughout the bar. Pelican Harry's Sports Grill, 14807 Founders Crossing, Homer Glen. Celebrate responsibly. Pigskin Preview with Edgy Tim on 1340 WJOL. Like working with Coach Joe. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL. Look on these news talk sports. Oh, you know, I'm just joshing you, Coach Joe. Yes. All right. Coach Glad Joe was great last week, by the way. I got to the coach, booth. Coach Joe's great every week. He had the equipment all laid out. He was sanitizing our booth down. He was getting all cleaned Look out at for you. me. Man, he was treating me like a royalty PT with the red carpet. PT has got you trained. I tell you what, by the way, I think the Julia Parchester could do a little bit better job cleaning up the booths oh, at the stadium. Okay. I'm just, just all saying. Right. Well, I think they could do a better by job. By the way, that is Joe Rodigero. <laughs> R-O-D. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's eight one five. Yes. yes. Jeff, he's throwing me under the bus, Jeff. <laughs> Email Scott Slocum <laughs> at Scott at W. Okay. All right. Anyway, we are going to continue the fun and, and frivolity and, and, and get back into this. And we are going to go out to the phone lines and be joined by the head coach, the head man in charge of your Wilmington Wildcats. Mr. Jeff Reins joins us. Coach, welcome aboard. Hey, guys. How are we doing tonight? We're as stupid as ever, coach. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that should that should be the tagline you should cut that up and we'll just we'll just run with that all year what is ever we're 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 older and we're dumber than ever oh that's Big for skin sure. preview well you get to dust off the old uh the old game plan from uh very early in the year against your opponent this week i'm sure your kids and your community are not disappointed you are playing seneca this week uh, yeah, hey, great, uh, you know, it was a great game, game one, and, uh, you know, here, here we are in the quarterfinals playing them again, you know, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great challenge for us uh, to go over there again and play, uh, you know, this time of the year, if you're still playing, you know, that's something special, and, and uh, we definitely know that, but we're playing a very good Seneca team. Coach Maxwell's done, done a heck of a job getting those guys ready, uh, and, uh, you know, quarterfinal time guys it's uh, going to be a great atmosphere there great small small town football at its best jeff i saw some highlights of, of the game from last week it seemed like the field was the field as bad as it looked on tv uh, i wasn't too bad i no, it, it was uh i mean a little beat up but but not nothing terrible uh you know and, and when, I, when we got on the field it was it was a little soft and a little beat up in the middle but not too bad okay um I'm going to talk about your defense. Uh, you know, the, the first game against Seneca, you, you gave up 27 points. And I, I know you, you talk about the process of the team from beginning to end or beginning to this, this time right now in the quarterfinals. And, and, and I know you often say to us that you get guys in positions and see what they can do and what they can't do, and you kind of change things around. And ever since that game, your defense, in my eyes, have been very outstanding. We've got a chance to see them against Reed Custer. Uh, you guys have not given up more than 14 points in the, in the la last 10 games. And last week, you only gave up 110 yards to an undefeated team um, that, that was look, looking to move on. So defensively, was the difference now, let's say from now until, let's say, week one, is it just that everybody knows, knows what they're doing and what their assignments are? Yeah, I, I think the experience is, is the thing. We had, uh, I think we had four, four or five new kids starting, and uh, and, and you know, and, and there were situations where maybe you had some seniors that were playing, and then uh, some uh, uh, lower level kids came up, and and uh, your juniors, uh, you know, they they just played themselves through those situations, and and we made a few changes here and there, and. Uh, uh, we try to get a little bit more speed on the field, but I, I just think, you know, the kids playing together uh, versus, you know, versus your Seneca, you know, we found out a lot about ourselves after that game. Uh, then we went and played a good Aurora Christian team. Uh, and, and I thought after those first two games, we had a really good feel for, for where, 
our kids were at, what changes we had to make. We didn't have to make many, but we, we had to make a few. And uh, uh, I, I felt we got a little bit more speed on the field also. I think that's helped. As far as going into this game, and, and obviously you've got tape from week one and can go back and do it, is there a tendency to maybe at times almost over analyze? Yeah. And, and, you got, yeah. You, you got to watch yourself as a head coach yep. or any coach from that standpoint. You know, yeah. Uh, you, you know, you did a lot of work on them, obviously. And, and we both, you know, Terry and I, I'm, I'm sure they did a ton of work on us over the summer and us on them. And so you don't want to overcoach your kids. That's, that's for sure. And uh, uh, you, you don't want them thinking, you want them reacting. And so I, I think it's a great point to bring up. You got to, uh, you, you don't want to overanalyze it. You know, you got to, you know, let, let the kids play. And, and uh, that's one thing I think our coaching staff has done a good job uh, during the season is, is uh, don't make things complicated. You know, let, let your kids go play and let them run and try to get to the football. And uh, when you play coach's team at uh, Seneca, you got to be disciplined in what you're doing. Uh, they got a really good up front. They're very good. And, and uh, they run a T formation concept, guys. Yeah. And it's one of the best faking uh, teams we've played. And so uh, it just makes you play very disciplined. And, and we're going to have to do that Saturday. It, it's just, Joe, it's, it's amazing to watch those offenses like a T formation and watch them operate. And you go watch film on Seneca and, and coach is 100%, right? I mean, they will, you know, I guarantee you, Jeff, they've had to have had at least a handful of plays blown dead this year. They had to have. Right. <laughs> the way they think yeah, so well. I, I, I agree. And, and they, they take a lot of pride in doing that. And, you know, it's a great, it's a great challenge for us to try to get ready for that again. Uh, but, no, Terry, he, he, he's uh, taken a system. And uh, uh, he's, he's, he's full, he, you know, he's full go into it, totally believes in it. And, uh, they're doing a really good job with that right now. Is it? Is it arguably probably one of the better offenses to run for smaller school football? Just from a fact that you don't so. have I mean, to have you don't have to have six foot three, two hundred eighty pound linemen across the board. Uh, yeah, I, well, I think especially this time of the year, you know, we, we had great weather last yep. week. It looks like we're going to have good weather this week. But usually, uh, you know, when you get to this time of the year. Uh, you know, and, and you know, obviously we're we're under the same philosophy: run the football, right. keep keep the other team's offense off the field, uh, things along those lines. I, I, uh, yes, my, I am totally in on on having an offense such as ours, such as Coach Maxwell, what he, what he's doing, uh, and uh, I, I just think, uh, and it's tough. It's tough to sell sometimes because people don't, you know, oh, that's a boring offense, you know. Uh, how do you get kids to college this way? You know, we've had plenty of kids go on to play. And uh, uh, I, I, you know, you, you don't have to com convince me to run to a, a run oriented offense, particularly at that small school level. I, I think for me, it's the best way to go. I know everybody has their own opinion. Uh, but uh, for myself and coach, I'm sure he, he, he feels the same way. Jeff, you know, we were talking just with this T formation in, in the faking of Seneca. And you mentioned that you got some more speed on defense. I think you're, I, I would assume you're telling your kids if you're off the ball or off to where you think the ball is going to go with the speed maybe you have in the secondary and at your linebacker positions just to hold your ground and just see what develops. Yeah, I mean, you got certain keys that you have to follow. Uh, and, you know, you just got to make sure that you're following those keys. Uh, and, and, you know, we got in some trouble uh, in our first game. We learned a lot about ourselves as far as, uh, hey, if you got a, if you got a job to do, make sure you do that job. And, and a, a team like Seneca is going uh, to make you pay for that if you don't. And uh, uh, so hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll find out how much we learned going, going into Saturday's game. But uh, you're exactly right. It's, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, option football in a way a little bit because, uh, you know, everybody's got their job to do. And if you don't do that job, uh, eventually he's going to find that, you know, that weakness of your defense and, uh, you know, he's going to make you pay for it. And so, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's quite the challenge. You go from uh, when we, we played Tri-Valley last week, we went from uh, 100 formations and trying to get ready for that. And then you go to a team that has basically one formation. They do get out of it a little bit. 
but what they can do with that formation is really good. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, no doubt about it. Um, you've been involved in some doozies when it comes to difficult brackets. Let's face it. I mean, you, you, you know, I always look at you guys as is a prime example of why one through thirty two should happen. But we all know oh, where yeah. that we all we all know where that's gone. <laughs> um, arguably, could this be one of the toughest paths you've had? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I would say. I mean, there's been some times in the three A North uh, in our three A days there were, uh, you know, the Princeton's, the Byron's, the High C's back in, and then my yeah. I was going to say throw a Catholic guys. school or two in, and and then now you you get the uh, you look at what we're, we're, we're in now. Heck, we're the, I think we're the only team guys, right, with a loss. And, yeah. Uh, yes. And with a loss and out of all those teams. And so that's as tough as it gets. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, we played an undefeated team last week in the quarter or in the second round, for crying out loud. And uh, Tri Valley was a really good team, and we had a good day. And you turn around, you play Seneca. Now, the winner of Seneca is going to, us and Seneca is going to play the winner of Bloomington Central. And Catholic and then Marora, who both are undefeated. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. And so, uh, no, it's two way. I'll put two way North up against anybody as far as uh, uh, some some quality teams and who you're facing. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's it's incredibly tough. Hey, Joe, I, I showed you what, what I've been looking on my phone since I came in <laughs> yeah. here, haven't you? Jeff, he's going to take care of what I've been looking at. Uh, he's been look looking for uh, you know these you know they have um, it's called go big advertising you know the the blow up things you know at Christmas time and stuff and he's he's researching something Jeff that we talked about last year he's he's trying to research a blow up oh, oh Jeff I haven't Reed. stopped I haven't stopped it's like, he hasn't stopped with <laughs> when this I get at an all. idea Joe you know how I am <laughs> yeah uh, he's he's researching all this stuff so. You know, if there's one day that big box shows up at your really house, really big box, you'll know who it came from. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tell you. Go ahead. Go ahead and doubt no, me, coach. No, I'm staying away from that totally. <laughs> I, I put it to you this way. It will not happen during a season. I would not do that. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, now, hey, I will be waiting patiently. Then, now, okay? now, maybe maybe like a Christmas break. Okay. It's not going to be this Christmas break because there is going to be some fundraising involved. These things are not cheap. That is what I've discovered in my research. Okay. But, pal, you're worth it. Oh, every, every, every dime. You're worth it. Every dime. Yep. And I know that community. That community will step up when it's time. I know that. So, So we'll get it done. Okay. Right. I look at him. I look at him as like guardians of guardians of of Wilmington. Yes. You got the Rocket Man on one side of town, and then we're going to put the blow up Jeff Reeds on the other side of town. <laughs> <laughs> like defending oh, the boy. town. We 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 got it all covered. All taken care oh, of, Jeff. Boy. Okay. Pal, oh. best of luck yes, on good Saturday. Luck, Jeff. Glad you could laugh for a minute. And uh, all right, go back to work. Go back to watching <laughs> Huddle. Go back to work. Yeah, you got it. Hey, guys, I really appreciate you having me on, okay? You bet. All right, good luck, Thanks, Jeff. Jeff. Okay, guys. All right, Jeff Reins joined <laughs> us. In. Dude, dude, keep laughing. I know. I'm telling you. It's coming. <laughs> I cannot wait to see the day that that thing rolls you like up. That, you house. like that concept, though? I do. Like one on one end of town and one on the yeah. other, like the two guardians guarding yes. the town. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep. yep. I don't know. Someone put a blow-up thing <laughs> It looks like the coach. It looks like our our, our head coach on the, on the other end of town. I don't know. All right. Well, we appreciate Jeff joining us. And again, Joe, just what a bracket. I mean, come yeah. on, man. This is it is it's crazy. Well, we, we've said it, that it, right, it right from the beginning when the when the bracket came out. We go, seriously. Holy cow. And again, I'm not putting anybody down here, but you get out of that north bracket. Could that be a blowout? In the final, I it very well could be because the the South is not very strong at all. Yeah, yeah. Like that, Jeff said, I, everybody else that's in they're the all up together break, in the North. They're they're all undefeated except for him. The 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 worst part about this, and and it's bad for Moroa too. I, there there's no way they should be in the North. There's no. just no way. There's no way they should have. They should not have been in the North. They they should be out of this North bracket, and Moroa should have a better shot. According to their playoff system, geography-wise, they should have a better shot, and they should be in the South. But they're not. They're so, not. Welcome to the North. <laughs>
Oh, well. All right, we're going to step aside and take a break. When we come back, Rob Zavonar, the head coach of the Lincoln Way East Griffins, will join us. We'll break down his game. This is the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk Sports. We're as stupid as ever. See, let's be honest. Insurance rates have skyrocketed over the last 18 months, and none of us are happy. This is State Farm Agent Kevin Malloy, and I feel the same pain you do when the bill comes in the mail. When times are at their worst, people are looking for someone they can trust. And with five consecutive years of being named the best of Will County in the insurance category, why not consider calling the Malloy Agency? 815-463-5800. Like a good neighbor, we are and will be there when you need us. Mark your calendars for this Sunday, November 12th, when Providence Catholic High School in New Lenox will host its annual open house for all grade school families. Providence is known for its top-ranked programs in academics, fine arts, and that's where they have more state championships than any other private school in the state. Did you know that Providence Catholic School has extensive scholarship and grant programs to make it affordable for all 8th grade families? Want to learn to school? Go to Providence Catholic. For information, become a Celtic and become something greater. Jim Gaffigan here with some more straight talk. Now you can get a Walmart Plus membership. Plus, not pay for it because it's included with Straight Talk wireless plans. You get free delivery with Walmart Plus, plus a Paramount Plus subscription included. Plus, you pay less for gas. That's a lot of pluses. Only Straight Talk gives you unlimited 5G data and Walmart Plus included on select plans for free. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart. Requires service on gold or platinum unlimited. One offer per eligible account. Paramount Plus Essential Plan only. Separate registration required. Additional terms apply. When customer service seems to be at its worst, we all have the opportunity to show appreciation and gratitude to our loyal clients and customers. So this year, for client and customer Christmas gifts, give them Dan's Homemade Candies. Dan's Homemade Candies fills beautiful boxes with your favorite selections of their delicious fresh homemade chocolate. Dan's has several different sizes to choose from and you can customize what goes into those boxes from mouth-watering mint meltaways to caramel corn and cheese popcorn to old-fashioned hard candy. Whatever works for your budget it and your tastes and discounts are available. So call for your company today. Make this Christmas season a win-win for you, your clients, and a locally owned, locally operated business. Call Dan's Homemade Candies with two locations in Joliet, 229 East Cass and 1003 Plainfield Road. Or order online at danshomemadecandies.com. That's danshomemadecandies.com. You've heard all the ads. You keep putting it off. Make today the day you call Advantage Driver Training and change your career. Four short weeks from now, you can have your CDL driver's license and a whole new job when you call Advantage Driver Training today. You've heard all the advantages of getting your CDL truck driver's license from Advantage Driver Training, like choosing from day or evening classes taught by experienced truck drivers with small class sizes in a Secretary of State approved CDL school. This is a whole new career in four short weeks with one low, all-inclusive price and no hidden costs. Not all driver training schools are the same. So do your homework and take advantage of Advantage Driver Training's huge new facility for your future. The opportunities are better than ever before. So let's get this CDL career thing done this fall. Call Advantage Driver Training today or go online, advantage-drivertraining.com. Advantage Driver Training, going the extra mile for you. We're as stupid as ever. High School Football on 1340 WJOL. And welcome back. Yes, we are as stupid as ever. Welcome back yeah. to the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL. Will County's News Talk Sports. Ed you, Tim, here along with the coach, Joe Radagaro and Evan Bredesen. Guys, we are hopefully going to connect soon with uh, Lincoln Way East head coach Rob Zvonar. Uh, we are trying to uh, get a hold of him. I'm sure Rob is doing something much more than, but more important than talking about a couple of knuckleheads here. That's right. But uh, Joe, again, very familiar foe, Warren yes. Warren Warren Township. Um, yeah, you know, a team that they've played a handful of times recently in the playoffs, and they've had, had good success with um, state championship game a few years ago. That uh, last quarterfinals, they beat them at home. They beat them in, in Lincoln Way, 35-14. So. I, I tell you what's what's a little dangerous about this Warren team is that it seems like offensively they found an answer late in the year, and their offense has really gotten going. You know, get, 
kicking in like they have in the past. I, I really like their quarterback. I, yeah. I, he does a great Jack job. Wolf. And that's yeah. what I was going to ask Rob. He does a great job at zone reading, and, and he can throw the football. Yeah. yeah. They don't no like doubt. to throw the football unless they really have to. And but he's it seems capable. Like every time they threw the ball last week, I saw some highlights. They were just beating guys deep. And young. He's young. He's a sophomore. A, a lot of youth on that team. A lot of, yeah. a lot of younger guys. So, yeah, that could be a real scary thing. And, and again, we're hoping to talk to Rob and, and hook up with him for a few minutes here. Um, I want to see the offense get going here. So do I. They, they struggled uh, a little bit. I know um, last week against Manuka, we, we talked about Manuka's defense, and I, I thought it was it, it, they did a good job. Uh, a couple times, I know they had some big East Lincoln Way East. They, there was one where the quarterback ran on a keeper uh, down to about the 10-yard, fumbled the ball, but recovered it. But there was a holding call, and they happened to call it on Rob's son. But I think the play guy. Yeah. I mean, he just literally drove him in. I don't know how how they they, they said the penalty was on him, but I, I just I, I I just didn't see it. He just ran over the guy and pancaked him. And there was another one where they did score a touchdown. I think that got brought up at dinner or no? Uh, It's very, very good. I mean, it's it's hard to score against those guys. If if the offense doesn't turn the ball over and don't put their defense into particular situations, uh, it it's awfully hard to go eighty yards against those guys. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about it. So, uh, you know, what? we'll uh, until we hear from Rob Zavonar, we'll take calls eight one five two five four seventy three hundred. If you've got something to add, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, by the way. We had a little little tech glitch here just a minute ago with the stream, so we apologize for that. Just kind of popped in and out real quick. Does that every once in a while. I don't know what that is. No idea what that is. Uh, another Bob, huh? All right, let's go out. Is this other Bob? Hello, other Hi, Bob. Hello. How you doing? Good, pal. Good, What's Bob. up? Good, good. Hey, uh, something struck me as kind of strange. I don't know if you can get into the bottom of it or why it happened or what. Okay. JCA Morris, they're what twenty five miles apart. Twenty three. Yep. Did the, did did it today for a story. Okay. Why do we have three o'clock start? It's a good. That's a really good. That's that's a really good question. And Joe, we've been talking about this, and it's been driving me nuts. I mean, I get if if you're going to like East St. Louis, exactly, and you want to start at three o'clock, that makes all the sense in the world because you got to travel, you've got a two, three hour, four hour bus ride. You know, uh, Mount Carmel and Quincy is like four o'clock, I think, a four o'clock start. Understandable, right? Totally understandable. I mean, and by the way, and I told Jordan Lynch this, there might be a a, a tougher drive than going to Quincy. Oh, it's a horrible drive. It is. It's it's absolutely horrible. Uh, it's you like know, going to Macomb. You're like excited to get to the Macomb area, and you still have another hour. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, that gives you an idea. It this is. Time of the year, it can be twenty degree difference between yes. one o'clock and five o'clock. Hundred percent. Yes. And and we talked about that too at night games where, you know, starting at like this JCA game starting at three is a heck of a lot better than starting at five or six from a temperature standpoint. I agree. But I give you that, I, but why not one? I don't know. I don't know. We're, we don't have Alan Thorson on. We'll ask Jaws. I don't know if Jaws is going to have an answer for it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll ask. It's, it's, it's definitely worth asking for sure. Now, sometimes I know that there's been cases where school districts have, have had other things going on. You know, there's a million activities, as you guys well know, this time of year. There's band. There's all different kinds of other sports, soccer, everything. Maybe there's maybe there's a, a conflict with something else. I, I just don't know. But it's a really good question, Bob. Uh, it's something that's been driving me nuts, especially this playoff season, because we just have nearby opponents that are playing at the strangest times. Yes. And basically, yeah. I can only get to one game. It yes. just doesn't seem to make sense to right. me. I, uh, I totally I agree. 
Maybe. I hope there is a reason behind it. We'll find out. We'll try to. Something else was going on. Yep. Should be a great game, though, huh? Oh, looking forward to it. It's one of those games that I think whoever makes the least amount of penalties yeah, and cleans up yep. the turnovers. Yep. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt. I think we all, I think both sides will agree on that for sure. And um, is it, I, I guess, I guess it is a rivalry, Joe, right? Oh, it is. Sure okay. It is. I mean, you don't play that often. No, but again, I think th- when you get two tradition, Bob, you agree with me here, two traditional teams with massive traditions for, for their program get getting together and like the province Jolie Catholic game and in and, and this game here. They they they've played more in the past in the playoffs and and um I think eight times in the playoffs if I counted correctly today. But you know I'm getting old and I, <laughs> I tend to for, overlook some things. But I think it's a rivalry game because of the traditions of the program. Yeah. Yeah, and and the games that they have played as of recently have been pretty yep. damn epic. Yep. So, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Bob. All right, thanks, fellas. All right, Bob. Bob, Bob By the way, weather on the go. Watching us on YouTube. Thanks, weather. Uh, Icy Catholic was supposed to play at two o'clock. Then they backed their time up to four due to the volleyball team going to state. Okay. I mean. I don't know. I, is the state game like maybe one o'clock or something? I, maybe, maybe. So, yep. okay, that's cool. I know for Morris Joliet Catholic, the temperature high in Morris on Saturday is scheduled to be fifty-one, and it's going to be supposed to be fifty-one at three p.m. That's where the high is. Now, I doubt that that right. is how it, it just worked out that way this time. I'm sure, but it does ask a, an interesting. An interesting question, but as you brought up, as we get like more turf facilities and things like that, like multi-use, where hey, we can have an event before or after yes. a game that that could dictate when your facility is available. Because now, hey, instead of having to pay to get a different facility for this competition, now we can do them back to back on the same field on the same day, and we just got to push the football game back a couple of hours. So we're going to see more of this, probably, unfortunately, not less of it. And, you know, where Jolie Catholic plays, we all know at the stadium, you got University of St. Francis playing too. And whether they had a home game or not, I know back in the day, uh, St. Francis always had the field first, and Jolie Catholic would play the 6 o'clock game at yeah. night on a Saturday. Yep. Uh, weather on a ghost is icy Catholic volleyball playing at, at noon. Okay. So, makes all the sense in the world there, Weather. Thank you. Uh, is this is this MC Cole? Is this MC? Is this M. Cole or MC Ole? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Either one, he po- he wants to know what we think of uh, East St. Louis and Kankakee in 6A. And then then our friend also says, Kankakee calling out East St. Louis. Yeah, that is a bad idea. Yeah. That is a real <laughs> bad idea. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. The Flyers live off of that. That's a real thing someone did? That is fuel for East St. Louis. Man, do not call them out ever. Just put gasoline on a fire. Why don't you? Does Kankakee's field turf? For now. <laughs> well, I'm just... <laughs> could, it could be scorched uh, about 4 o'clock on turf? Saturday. Because that's going to be a track meet. It should oh, be. Oh, yes. Um, so I, I would say my biggest question for Kankakee going into that how healthy is Lorenz uh, Walters, your quarterback? I, I know they've been kind of playing him spot here and there. If he's 100% healthy and anywhere near the level that I saw him against Crete, they could potentially hang with East St. Louis. But if Lorenz is not healthy, I think Kankakee could be in trouble in that game. But, again, um, very good. Very good backup. I believe it's a uh, is it Oliver Terrell? Cole Terrell? I got I, Terrell's the last name is a backup quarterback. Nice player, does some good things, but man, they're a different team with Lorenz Walters under center. And I just think in a game like this, M. Cole, you you got to have all 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 hands on deck. Yes, especially against that East yes. St. Louis team. I mean, I mean, first of all, no one's ta- talking about Pop's battle, the quarterback from East St. Louis. He's a four year varsity starter for the Flyers. He's got to have. Oh, Got to have almost every career passing yard mark at East St. Louis. He's pretty close from what I've been told. 
and and he's just been phenomenal. And 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 that kid continues. To, he's played more high school football than probably anyone in the state of Illinois in his career. Yes. You think of all the deep runs they've had and state title runs. He's played a tremendous amount of high school football. Great kid, great player. And then you just look at the underclassmen. You saw the underclassmen talent. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and he's They're, played against talent across the country, right. nationally ranked. Yes. Right. Well. The best and, of the best. And hung the, with Mount Carmel for four quarters and lost, and then and then basically hung for a half against one of the top teams in Texas. Those are two losses. Yes. So, and then you look at Edwardsville in a quarterfinal and the success they've had, and East St. Louis beat them. wasn't a blowout. It was a relatively tight game, but uh, you know. And then also uh, Belleville East. I saw Belleville East last week against Maine South. They were up twenty-one twenty at half, and Belleville East had a really good team. So again, pretty tested. The only thing that sidetracks East St. Louis are penalties and mistakes. That that's yeah. they don't well, make, they don't make a lot of mistakes. No, they don't, they don't make a lot of much, mistakes. But they the penalties the penalties kind of keep uh, yeah. keep them down a little bit. Thank you, Steve Susie. Cedric Cedric Tyrell the third. So I was close, but uh, again, he does a nice job. He's a backup quarterback, but to me, Lorenzen Walters is is the real deal and. And the guy that I would be very afraid of if I'm a uh, Lincoln, if I'm a Lincoln East, if I'm a uh, East St. Louis defensive coordinator, because he can do a lot of things with the football in and out of the pockets. But should be a great game. There's no doubt. Yeah. I, it's real to me. It's really intriguing. So, uh, unfortunately, didn't hear from Rob Zavonar. So again, we'll we'll take care of it, Rob. No problem. Yes. Uh, again, should be a great game Saturday night, seven o'clock kickoff, by the way. So I, I am definitely planning on warming up the uh, desktop and, and watching that as soon as I get home while I'll be working on, uh, working on my stuff from Morris and Joliet Catholic. So again, just, uh, appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to step aside. We're going to have to take a break, but, uh, boy, hour one in the books already. Uh, he smiley, go away. I'm joking. Um, okay, somebody's saying nice things to Seuss. That's nice. Seuss is a good dude. We like Seuss. So, all right, hour number one in the books. Don't go anywhere after ABC News. We'll be back for hour number two. Joining us, hopefully, in hour number two, Jake Jaworski at 7.05 and uh, Tyler Plants at 7.40. So, uh, don't go anywhere. This is the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL. Will County's News Talk Sports. Official rules for WJOL AM 1340. No purchases necessary. All contestants must be at least 18 years or older to participate unless specified in contest rules. All state and local, federal, and other taxes and other fees for prizes awarded are the sole responsibility of the winner. Prizes valued over $600 will be issued in the IRS 1099 form to report their winnings. All prizes are awarded as is. All entrants and winners agree that the station Alpha Media LLC and their affiliates shall have no liability and shall be held blameless for any injury or misfortune or damage to any person or property insured by entering participating in winning or losing any contest by use or non-use of any prize received. All entrants and winners agree that the station may broadcast or publish their name, city of residence, photo, videotape, film, or any other likeness, including their voice, recorded or live for any reason the station deems necessary without compensation. The radio station reserves the right to change the rules for any contest at any time without notice and limit the number of times an individual may enter a contest or drawing. The radio station will not be responsible for busy lines, disconnections, poor connections, computer malfunctions, lost, late, or misdirected emails, faxes, or mail, or any other circumstances. You will this Sports. 1340. From ABC News, I'm Daria Albinger. They were first reported in Washington and Georgia. Suspicious letters sent to election offices. Some of them tested positive for fentanyl. And now they're showing up in more states. By the hour, more states are being added to the list of those that have received suspicious letters. Washington State, Oregon, Georgia, now California and Nevada are included. In Tacoma, Washington, election officials say their letter had baking soda in it. That letter reading end elections now. Two of the letters, one in King County, Washington, and another in Spokane, tested positive for trace amounts of fentanyl, but further testing is needed on those letters. Alex Stone, EBC News. The Pentagon says U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria have come under drone or rocket attack four times since Wednesday's retaliatory strike against Iranian-backed militia groups. The significant issue right now is what is going to be a level of response by the U.S. military that would actually deter Iran through their Iranian-backed proxies in Iraq and Syria from these continuous attacks 
against U.S. positions. ABC News National Security and Defense Analyst Mick Mulroy. The White House confirming Israel's agreed to daily four-hour humanitarian pauses as it fights Hamas in northern Gaza. A former Baltimore City prosecutor has been convicted of lying about finances from a side business to improperly access retirement funds during the pandemic. Marilyn Mosby used the money to buy two homes in Florida. President Biden celebrates the end of the UAW strike with a visit to a Stellantis plant in Belvedere, Illinois. I stood and others stood with you shoulder to shoulder on that picket line. Yeah. My predecessor went to a non-union shop and attacked yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you so I hope you guys have a memory. Mr. Biden telling the workers he was with them from the beginning. Stocks closed lower today. You're listening to ABC News. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. The president of Portugal says he is dissolving parliament and calling an early election. Earlier this week, the prime minister resigned amid a corruption scandal. A new push to impeach a member of the Biden administration. It's a privileged resolution offered on the House floor by Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Impeaching Alejandro Nicholas Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security. Greene says the secretary has failed to secure the border. Mayorkas has made it easier for illegal people and drugs to enter the United States. Her resolution now forces new House Speaker Mike Johnson to decide whether to hold an impeachment vote on the floor sometime early next week or to send the measure to committee for further consideration. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. There's eight days until the federal government runs out of money. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries says he has no plans on working with Republicans to fund the government and avert a government shutdown next Friday. When asked if a Republican proposed laddered approach staggering the expiration dates for different services has support from Democrats. That is reckless and would only crash and burn the federal government. It's a non-starter. Meanwhile, the Senate is urging for bipartisanship as the House scrambles to find new options. M1, ABC News, Washington. What's in an old fashioned in Wisconsin? It's brandy, not bourbon. And now state lawmakers want to make it the official state cocktail. This is ABC News. When your people are ready, your business is ready. Cintas makes sure they have what they need to perform their best. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, fire protection systems that are tested and inspected, first aid and safety supplies, floor mats, or cleaning tools and restroom products, stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together, so visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready. And get ready for the workday. Daria Albinger, ABC News. Let's be honest, insurance rates have skyrocketed over the last 18 months and none of us are happy. This is State Farm Agent Kevin Malloy, and I feel the same pain you do when the bill comes in the mail. When times are at their worst, people are looking for someone they can trust. And with five consecutive years of being named the best of Will County in the insurance category, why not consider calling the Malloy Agency? 815-463-5800. Like a good neighbor, we are and will be there when you need us. Join local, family-owned Wilk Real Estate every Wednesday at 9 a.m. for Today's Real Estate with Brent Wilk. Local and experienced realtor Brent Wilk will welcome expert guests each week to discuss topics like home prices and interest rates, mortgage lending, home improvement and maintenance, navigating the legal details of buying and selling, and the latest developments from your community leaders and city officials. Tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. to hear Today's Real Estate with Brent Wilk on 1340 WJOL. The name to know for heating and air conditioning too. 
Treat every homeowner like they're your favorite aunt. Hi, this is Rick Cranholm, president of Johansson & Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning. Our focus is to remember that everyone who calls us, especially in emergencies, is someone's aunt, grandma, father, or brother. We work hard to give you and your loved ones the best possible service, from answering the call quickly to honestly telling you what's wrong to giving you straight pricing with options to keep it affordable but functional. It's probably why I get a lot of calls asking me to have my guys take a look at their aunt's system and how I see our hard work as Johansson and Anderson's role in keeping our community safe, comfortable, and vibrant. If your family's home needs heating and air conditioning call the name you can trust for over 75 years johansson and anderson call jna today sleep tight tonight call 815-723-9383 johansson and anderson a york certified comfort expert providing comfort all year round johansson and anderson Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Hey, good morning. You're heading to the airport, right? Yep, thanks for checking. I like the car. How long have you been a rideshare driver? About three years now, but I really enjoy it. Isn't it hard to make money these days with the price of gas being so high? Not for me. I use Upside, the free app that gives you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get real money back when you get gas with the Upside app? Yep, I get real cash back every time I get gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make around 200 to three hundred dollars wow that's serious extra cash i'm downloading the upside app now download the free upside app now to earn real cash back every time you buy gas use promo code car for an extra 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank you can cash out anytime right to your bank account paypal or a gift card for amazon and other brands just download the free upside app and use promo code car for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank that's code car High School Football on 1340 WJOL. And welcome back. It is our number two of the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340. WJOL, Will County's News Talk Sports. Edgy Tim along with the coach Joe Rodigero and Evan Bredesen. Joe, this edition and every edition of Pigskin Preview brought to you by State Farm agents John Wright and Joliet and Kevin Malloy in New Lenox like a good neighbor, Joe. State Farm is there. Uh, broadcast schedule is as follows. Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff in lovely Morris as Morris host Joliet Catholic. Little game, a couple of friends getting together on Saturday afternoon. Uh, toss the pigskin around, Joe. Maybe not even toss it. Just kind of pass it back and forth between each other. We'll see. And we will be there to make the call. Joe Rodigero and Evan Bredesen on the call from uh, Mor Morris War Memorial Stadium. Again, don't know if that's what they're calling it, but I am for tonight. And looking forward. Joe, we're going to go out to the phone lines. We have to be very fast and very efficient because Mr. Jaworski is in the middle of a work thing. And yes. we don't want to get him in trouble. So, hi, Jaws. What's up, guys? How are you? It's good. good. We don't want to get you in trouble. You okay? Or No, it's all good. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure, you know, he's good. No, we're all good. Okay. We know, we know how, you know, you, you've got responsibilities you need to take care of. So, um, <laughs> the whole area is excited. Obviously that's the biggest no brainer in the world. Everywhere you go, they're talking about this game. Um, how's the week gone health wise? Where are you at with your guys right now? Oh, um, you know, I think we've had a good week of practice. Um, that's one thing, um, with, with our group this year, uh, senior leadership, um, it has been great. Um, and then we have a very, very mature junior class as well. So, you know, very few times have I walked out of practice and I can't remember um, uh, a single practice where I just walked out and they're like, man, we just, we just didn't have it today. And that's, you know, credit to our kids, you know, for their maturity and, you know, the leadership and the accountability into our coaches, you know. So um, I think we've had a good week. You know, we got to have another crisp, clean, um, efficient day tomorrow, uh, final prep. And uh, to be ready to go for Saturday. Um, I mean, as far as health goes, you know, I think uh, as you get to week twelve and you play the type of schedule that that we've played, that um, you know, guys, you know, nobody's one hundred percent, you know, at this point in the season. But uh, you know, we got some guys with some bumps and bruises and, and whatnot. But uh, you know, we've had all hands on deck at practice this week, so it'll be good. Good. So, so you're on the road this week. I got to ask: Do we have the bus situation <laughs> taken care of? Uh, you know, I, 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 I can fit, me, I so, can fit, you know. I can fit two or three in my car. I know Joe <laughs> can fit a few. Yes. Evan, Evan's doing the game. He can fit three. So that's like almost 10 there. 
and we've yeah, got like we've got like four radio station vehicles out in front of the station, so we can help we can if get you need the us. offense and defense. They're all twenty-two guys for you, Jaws. If you need to, uh, knock on wood, I think we're good. You know, I think we're good. <laughs> if we got a lock on any, I think we can make it a time. Jordan's a little different story. Yeah, we 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 had a little fun with that last week. We, yeah. we had some good laughs, so <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, what is it about this team that you've seen from Morris? What do they do? What is it that kind of maybe separates them from maybe some of the other teams that you've run into so far? You know, I think when you just, you know look at the quality of program that they are, you know, they're kids play hard, uh, they play fast, they swarm mm-hmm. the ball on defense, create a lot of turnovers. Um, and then, you know, offensively, they got, you know, a really good quarterback, a couple of receivers you can get the ball to, um, you know, and then a really good running back, you know. And I think they're just well-coached. Yep. Um, like Coach Thorson, you know, well-coached. They execute well. Um, they compete. And, you know, like I said, I think they I think they play really hard, you know, and that's one thing that kind of jumps out on film when you watch them. So, so I'll ask you this question. I asked it to Joe and, and a little bit, a couple of it, and Evan off the air. Has Morris always been that rival for you in your era? I mean, it's you don't play a ton, but obviously when you do, they all seem to be pretty epic. Yeah, I mean, there's been some some good games, you know, the early '90s games were a little bit, you know, when I was a you know a little bit before my time, but you know, the, my my sophomore year, the quarterfinal game, um, and what was that '99? Um, uh, you know. Um, Quarterfinals, I think it was. I think it was a quarterfinal at the stadium, you know, where it was packed, and you know they, they, had, a, they had a missed field goal right at the buzzer, you know, and we ended up winning. Yep. Um, and I think they beat, we beat Tennessee the next week, and you know that was Coach Sharp's first, you know, state championship year. Um, and then my junior, or my senior year in 2001, we ended up beating them in a one possession game in the state championship game. You know, so a um, little bit of history playing, you know, against them when I was in high school, and then. Couple battles um, when I first got to, to JCA back from college, you know, coaching and stuff um, in 06 and 07. Um, and then, you know, I think we played them again in the quarterfinals um, or second round, maybe in 2011, I believe. And it's been, yeah, it's been 12 years since. But, uh, you know, obviously a local, you know, local team close by uh, that, that there's some history there, you know, and some, some great games in the regular season and in the playoffs. So, you know, this Saturday could be another, another chapter. Jaws, the you know I, I talked to you a little bit uh, this week. Defensively, for you guys, is it you know one thing that concerns is is the balance of their attack with with the run with the running and throwing. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, you know I think any team you know, and I think I you know I, I, would, I would assume more just kind of saying you know you want to be able to run the ball. You know, so obviously that's where. You know, we got to be able to take away the run, but they definitely have a, a, a really good quarterback and, you know, three, four receivers that he can get the ball to. So, but, uh, you know, it starts with stopping the run and then, one of, you know, kind of try to make them a little bit one dimensional and, you know, hopefully, you know, our front four can get after him a little bit if they you know, go in the drop back passing game. So, so we've noticed, and I've noticed, it seems like the further we get down the playoff road, the, the trick bag gets emptied out a little bit. You, you start to see some different things from, from programs. We all know about the uh, St. Ignatius fullback. We know that uh, Lincoln Way East had Joe. You said what? They had a couple of different big boy formations. Lyman running power eye last Friday night. Just. There we go. Uh, any any of those cooking by chance? I know you're not going to tell us, but uh, you know, I'm sure you've got some interesting things in the back of that playbook. Yeah, you know, you're always you're always tinkering like two point plays, which can also be you know yep. potential. I guess maybe trick plays, you know, maybe not even maybe not even trick plays, just just plays maybe that are a little bit different in a formation, different with personnel, like you had mentioned with the Lincoln Way East. You know, so I don't know if I'd say like trick plays, like gotcha type stuff, but uh, you know, can manipulate some personnel and and um, you know different parts of the field. So you know, I think there's always things that you kind of have and you don't you, you practice them all year. And then you don't really use them until, you know, that right moment. You feel that that is the right moment. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I guess we got maybe a couple things here and there. You can bring it together. Yeah, good. <laughs> Because oh, I just, I just, have to, tell you. I just know, I know he's not going to get, not going to tell us. I mean, no one listens to us, Joe, but we know it, it's fine. <laughs> um, 
but uh, again, it's it's uh, really looking forward to Saturday again. I've I haven't covered a game in Morris in about five six years, so looking forward to that. I know I've been over there for seven on seven. I know they've done some amazing renovations, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think in the preseason at the preseason WGL got to talk to Coach Gerson over the last couple of years. He just you know he he loves that new facility. Yeah. So yeah, it looks looks awesome on film. So uh, you know be be cool to, to check it out in person yeah go go out there and leave a little scorched earth and bring a wind <laughs> home and yeah a little a little dent in the new place nothing nothing wrong with that breaking in a little bit but uh yeah jaws i know you're busy man appreciate yeah, always taking luck, time Josh. for us and uh, again just wish you the best of luck we'll see you out there on saturday thanks guys looking forward to it see you saturday all, all right, right jaws jake jaworski joins us from jolly catholic academy hey guys before we go on a break i want to talk about this a little bit um, and obviously the Jolie Catholic family can, can relate and obviously we'll understand this as well. Uh, Thayer brothers. Yes. Um, very sad, very sad to see it close. Enjoyed that place. Uh, you won't find a better guy than Ricky Thayer. No, no um, no. taking the wife there a bunch of times, love the food. We go there all the time. We, we were going there probably once a month or so just to go get lunch and just, you know, something that had been in this town for a long time and, you know, going back to his mom before his mom passed and, you know, and again, just a great place. And obviously the Joliet Catholic ties are as thick as they go and with the Thayers and, and again, just wish Ricky and everybody there the best of luck. You know, I'm sure a very difficult time. And, you know, again, it's, they're trying to get their business in order and stuff. And, uh, but yeah, just, just thinking about them, Joe, you know, cause you know, it kind of came out and it kind of got leaked. And, you know, I'm, I, I th- from what it sounded like, Ricky probably wanted, they wanted to handle things a little differently. But, uh, you know, I know they've been getting a lot of support over the last week when they're getting ready to close up. But, uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people probably share the same sentiment, though, Joe. Yes. I, I, no, the, the Thayer family is is uh, synonymous with Jolie Catholic. And, yeah, and, no doubt. And, um, and it's, yeah, it, it again, you see a lot of, Restaurants like that closing down because of the fact of, I don't think it had anything to do with COVID. You just get maybe tired of, of do, doing it yeah. and, and, and the, the profits aren't there. So you have to, you have to, it's, it's still a big decision. COVID shook, shook a lot of things out. There's no doubt. It, it changed up a lot of things at the time. And, you know, again, just wish them all the best of luck yes. for sure. Just, to, just pillars in the, in the community here for many, many years. Yeah. And go back to, was it T&T's back in, right, yeah. uh, back in the day. So I was back in there, yeah. Been around here for a long time. Yeah. So uh, weather on the go, real good, real good point here brings up has an Illinois team had a running clock for 14 straight games in the IHSA history. Do you know, do you think Byron could do it? Yeah, Byron could do it yeah, this year, Joe. <laughs> Um, I'm sure there has been, and my guess is probably a smaller school, I would think. Yeah, I, I just, whether I just don't see anybody coming no. close to that. <laughs> no. I just, I just well, don't. Well, possibly Montini, maybe, Montini, maybe. If they get by Princeton on Saturday, but other than that, I just don't see anybody coming close to them. Scott Grant wants to know, what do I think of the north part of 4A? Well. I think the winner of IC and, and St. Lawrence, and I'll say right now, I think IC is the favorite in that game. I think St. Lawrence Joe can make things a little interesting. They're right. a pretty good team. I think the winner of that game winds up going to uh, play Rochester in the state championship yes. game. So yes. I, I don't, I, Scott Grant, I think I know who you're rooting for in that game, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think you would, you would, a safe bet would be IC. I, I think Wheaton Academy will beat Sandwich mm, mm, tomorrow sandwich. night. But, um, yeah, by the way, Evan, Mr. Belvedere North was eliminated from the playoffs. So I know that made you very sad. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I see is the favorite there. And, and again, if St. Lawrence can beat him, I think St. Lawrence can wind up playing in the state title game in 4A. Uh, so Scott, thank you for that question. Uh, and I'm going to guess this is someone from Quincy, Quincy over motor over, over Mount Carmel. Let's keep it rolling. Best, uh, play action passer QB, an all-purpose running back in Little and Rice. Well, I agree. They're both very good. Uh, Braden Little, the junior quarterback. And, Joe, here's the thing I've been talking about with Quincy that people need to understand. This is a really young team. I mean, all these skills that, that we're reading about and hearing about, they're all, they're all juniors. So this is a team that's going to be good this year. They're going to be good next year as well. My big concern for Quincy, and I've written about this and I've mentioned it, 
Number one, they haven't played a team this talented, this deep. And did I mention this talented before yeah. this year? They haven't faced anything close to what Mount Carmel offers. The other thing I think is going to be interesting is how well Mount Carmel matches up defensively with Quincy and their skills. Because one thing about Mount Carmel, they have college level potential defensive backs in that secondary. Yes, they do. Uh, uh, is it uh, Conway is like a six, two corner miles. Uh, uh, Charles Ma is a miles. Ch Charles miles is committed to Western Michigan. He's like a six foot two corner. Uh, Javi Payne is like a five ten junior corner. Who's going to wind up being a division one guy. They got dudes that can cover. And I don't know how many teams that Quincy has played where they've had dudes that can cover. Uh, Jarius Rice as a running back is a real danger. He's a really good back. I don't think he's quite as good as Darian Dupree, but Jarius Rice is going to be a college-level running back. There's no doubt in my mind. So it's a real interesting game for Mount Carmel, for sure. I like the caravan to get the win, but again, you're going to hear from this Quincy team for another year because they're going to be good again next year. Um yeah, I guess we're up against to realize the time's flying by. So, all right, we'll step aside, take a break. When we come back, we're going to have open lines, but we might bring a surprise guest. Joe, Joe, Coach Joe doesn't even know who we might bring in here. We're going to try. Come back and join us. You're listening to the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk Sports. Your taxes are overdue, but you still haven't filed. Maybe you haven't filed for years. What started out as one mistake has now turned into a major issue, but now it's overwhelming. Don't wait any longer. Call Greg Severson of the CPA firm of Cordano Severson & Associates. You've heard about Greg Severson for years and how he's helped many other people and businesses deal with the IRS, from fixing past errors to reducing your back taxes to working out reasonable payment plans. Whatever your issue is with the IRS, Greg has has the experience and the success to help you or your business get through this. Don't let the problem get any worse. Give yourself some peace of mind and call Greg Severson today. Call the firm that's provided quality tax advice for over 50 years right here in the Will County area. 815-744-1900. That's 815-744-1900. Cordano, Severson, and Associates, a firm that you can trust and your business can afford. Co-founder and proud member of the Will by Local Alliance. Black men are the most likely Americans to die from lung cancer, and black people develop the disease earlier in life than others. Federal guidelines have nearly doubled the number of black Americans eligible for lung cancer screening. Insurance companies are required to cover these tests for those ages 50 to 80 who smoke or used to smoke. If that's you, talk to a doctor about lung cancer screening. For more information and to find a screening center near you, visit acr.org slash mylcs. That's acr.org slash mylcs. Furnished by American College of Radiology. A lot of schools talk about training the cybersecurity workforce of the future, but do they really deliver? My Computer Career has been supplying the IT workforce with thousands of skilled, certified pros for 15 years. Train with the experts in support, networking, or cybersecurity and start your career in months, not years. Upskill even faster. On campus or live online, qualified students may get financial aid, including the GI Bill. My Computer Career, accredited, acclaimed, effective. Take the free career evaluation at mycomputercareer.edu. Tune in to 1340 WJOL. Next Monday morning, 4, Will County's Habitat for Humanity, Building Homes and Changing Lives. Hosted by members of the Will County Habitat for Humanity. Topics during the show will include affordable housing in Will County, how to become a Habitat partner, where Habitat is building in Will County, and ways you can get involved on their construction sites with their restore and their upcoming events. Will County's Habitat for Humanity, Building Homes, and Changing Lives. We'll run two Monday mornings a month from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Hey, Scott Slocum here. Have you heard? We're bringing back our radio stage production of It's a Wonderful Life at the Magnificent Rialto Square Theater. Think 1940s live radio stage production. Sound effects on stage, scripts falling, tons of fun as we retell this classic story with George, Mary, Mr. Potter, that's me, Clarence, and lots of crowd participation. That means you. All proceeds go right back to the Rialto Square Theater. Come have fun with us on Friday, December 8th. Tickets at Ticketmaster or in person at the Rialto Box Office. High School Football on 1340 WJOL. And welcome back. You are listening to the 
quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340. WJOL, Wilconnie's News Talk Sports. Edgy Tim along with the coach Joe Rodigaro and Evan Bredesen. Spinning the dials. Well, we're hoping to bring in a surprise guest, unfortunately, and good for him. He's probably surprise busy. He's, he's, he's probably a little busy. We're going to try to bring Dick Goss in, longtime Joliet uh, Herald editor. Talk about, you know, obviously Dick very, very involved and covered a lot of those Jolly Catholic Morris games over the years and would have loved to get his perspective. Oh, well, I was just a little late <laughs> yeah. trying to reach out to him. We'll we'll try that, Joe, maybe in the next week or two when yeah. uh, we got a little bit more time and maybe a few less teams and we can uh, reach out to him a little bit and uh, just do I haven't talked to Dick in a while, so it'd be good to hear from him. Um. Question, BMAC, how will JCA's O-line handle Morris? Well, I'm going to assume, BMAC, they're going to block them. I think that's a pretty good place to start. Oh, there's one viewer. I, I think, yeah, I, I think, yeah, there goes another one. Um, I think that's a great matchup, Joe. I, I think it is. Jolie too. Catholic's line's done a really good job this year. And, and again, that was a young group coming in. That's what, four, at one point, four junior starters, I believe, yes. up front. Yes. So. I wrote about that today. That that line has played well, and they've gotten better. And obviously, they're uh, they're pretty seasoned. Like every game, BMAC, that's obviously going to be a huge, huge uh, yeah, the, the deciding factor. The game, hundred um, percent. Yep, Dick just got back to me and said, "Yeah, next week maybe would be good." And thanks, Ed. So, all right, thanks, Dick, for getting back to us. We appreciate it. Eight one five two five four seventy three hundred. Joe, let's go through some of the some of the classes here, if you would like. Um, Before we start that, let's talk yes, a little bit about uh, Lincoln Way West. Yes. Playing Downers Grove North. Um, uh, Downers Grove North. You both have Hershey really good. Play. Both have really good running backs. Both want to establish that running back. That um, could be a 90-minute game. Could be. Um, Downers North, sophomore quarterback, Owen Lance, who's going to be a big-time quarterback. He's... Got a got a great arm, young guys. One of these young. But have you guys noticed? And again, I, I mentioned this in a story today. There's a ton of junior quarterbacks in the playoffs that are having really big years. Elliott at Mount Carmel. I mentioned Owen Lansu at Downers Downers North. Um, who else is left? Uh, and, you got Constantine Coins at, at Maine South. And it's not just junior quarterbacks. It's good junior. You're quarterbacks. mentioning three programs that are running top level offenses that were I don't want to say complex schemes, but have put a lot of responsibility on the quarterback. Like yeah. that Mount Carmel scheme. It's big. Jordan Lynch. Everything is put on the quarterback's shoulders. Same um, thing with Maine South and their juniors. Yes. Uh Ryan Fitz, Pat, Fitzgerald at Loyola. Loyola. Another one. Um going through Barrington's quarterback, Nick Peeper, big time, having a big season for them. He's a big factor. There's some really good young quarterbacks coming up over the next couple of years, so that's something to watch out for. You're you're going to see a couple of those guys get deep. Joe, I, I think that's a really back-and-forth game. I like Downers North up front, both O-line and D-line. They're physical. They're kind of nasty. I, I, I think West, we talked about this, and Evan mentioned this to me, and I laugh because Evan and I sometimes are like very, very in sync. I don't have a great feel for it. I, yeah. I, I think Wes is going to have a game on their hands. I really yeah. do. Yeah, they're going to have to establish the running game. And and I've I've seen Downers Grove North a little bit on film, and they you're right. They're they're yeah. Lying. Noah Battle Noah Battle's being talked about as a Player of the Year candidate, the running back for yeah, Downers he's North. Very, he's very good and plays both ways. Plays defensive back as well. So that that's a that's a big concern. I mean, we mentioned about Lincoln Way East. You know, every time they, they go up against Warren, you know, defensively, they're both pretty good. East has been able to figure them out a little bit with their offense. I just hope that offense shows up Saturday. Yeah, it's got to start get started right off the bat, in my yeah. opinion. It, yeah. it does. It cannot wait till the second half to get moved. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, Providence, we're going to have we're gonna have Tyler, Tyler Plants on in the last segment here, so we'll definitely get into that game a little bit. And we talked earlier with Jeff Reince about Wilmington and Seneca and Joe. I think Wilmington's going to get them. I think so too. I think Jeff. I think Jeff is. Those guys have been. Those guys have been kind of, kind of chomping at the bit to get back at Seneca from week one. I think they're going to go go out there and get it and bring it home. And I looked at the schedule today with with Seneca. They've only played two teams with winning records. Yeah. 
and one of them is Wilmington. But that was week one, and I, I think the improvement from week one to week now, the the uh, the, the quarterfinal game, week 12, uh, Wilmington has improved immensely. Another viewer, thanks, by the way, everybody watching on uh, YouTube Live. Uh, Leon Payne wants to know, who do you have between St. Francis and Morgan Park? Man, that's a – Leon, that's a – that's a good question. Um, you know, we, we've you been after the game. Yeah, we've been we've been saying I've been saying for a while this is not this is not a typical a typical Chicago Public League one or two rounds and out Morgan Park team. It's not at all. Uh, Chris James, I love him. He's like he's like my he's like my adopted son. I'm, I'm that close with Chris, and I couldn't be happier. All the hard work and the success he's putting in that Morgan Park program joe it's amazing what he's done over there yeah i mean they beat a very very good sycamore yeah i know i know i mean couldn't you say and wouldn't you say that this is the most successful morgan park has been since he was on the field for morgan park yeah 100 percent. really 100 percent. and and the whole point of this program with morgan park is look we we don't want to win the city anymore we want to win a state title, and that's been the focus i love that attitude by the way he's had he's had a young team guys like Tyshawn Griffin and Jovan Clark and Chris Durr and, you know, Marcus Saxon, a quarterback. He, he has brought these kids up and, and, you know, Ty, I remember Tyshawn Griffin is a freshman. He's one of these phenom eighth graders. You watch him play and, and this kid has gotten better every year. And, and, and it's, it's, again, it's, it's, it's playing smart football. It's not turning the ball over. It's limiting penalties. Okay, you don't have to be great at special teams. You got to execute. You got to have a kid that can punt the ball consistently, and you got to be able to make extra points, or you better be damn good at two point conversions. Yes. Morgan Park has has gotten past those challenges. Now, that being said, they're playing maybe the hottest team in the state right yeah, now in I, St. I Francis. Alessio Milovojic, um, he's another one that could wind up being Player of the Year. You're you're traveling to Wheaton, St. Francis. Good luck parking. I wish yes. you in advance. Oh. You might need to leave three hours in advance to find anywhere near that place to park. It's the one downfall of St. Francis. Yep. Not a whole lot of parking. Leon, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be really tight. I'll be honest. I am always pulling for, for Morgan Park and Chris James because I'm that close with Chris, but I have I have a lot of I have, a, I have a great relationship with Bob McMillan, too, in St. Francis. Man, that's a tough one for me. I'm going to take St. Francis, but I think it could be really, really close. And if I'm wrong, good for me. And the and the other side of that bracket is Nazareth at Carmel and Munline, which I think is going to be a great game, too. <sighs> and after seeing Carmel last week, I guess we didn't talk about it. No, we didn't. All right. So so I get to – and, Leon, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the question. Um so obviously there was a little little controversy coming out of that game. If uh, you haven't noticed by now, uh, Antioch a little upset about the whole Catholic school dominance in, in the playoffs. Kind of, kind of the Antioch coach kind of going off on Twitter after the game, and and has been for all week. But uh, they're really Carl's really good. They are. We Joe, them, they're, giga- Joe they're gigantic. Joe, they're gigantic. I mean, they might be as big as the Bears up front on the offensive line, and that's no joke. They are huge. And they've got some skilled players. Yeah. They Johnny those- Weber's a really good quarterback. Yep. Uh, the freshman phenom came in to mop-up duty, so you got to see him throw the ball around a little bit. It's a great coaching staff. I mean, Jason McKee's the head coach. Uh, you got some guy named Olin Krutz as your old line coach. So it's <laughs> you're just looking at these guys like, yeah, yeah okay, they, they kind of know what they're doing. Um, I like their two little running backs to – yeah, again, they're Tory French and um, uh, Donovan Day, and they're both really good. They're both a little different. Yes, they are. One's a little more of a more of a jitterbug. The other's a little bit more of a power guy. Um, Johnny Weber's a really good quarterback and throw it. They've got big receivers, they and, do. and they're that's a tough matchup. But you know what? We've all been counting out Naz the whole damn playoffs. <laughs> that's right. So they're probably going to turn around and win again. Yep. So I, I I just that that is arguably one of the best games. In, in the quarterfinal round. I think you win that, you got a very good chance of, of winning, winning state in 5A. I really do. So there you go, 815-254-7300. Got a little bit of time here, so let's go through it, Joe. We went through the area games. We'll go through 8A. Loyola, St. Ignatius. I, You know what? I'm sure Loyola will blow them out like they blow everyone else out, but, Joe, that offense that Ignatius runs, <laughs> yeah. can it give Loyola a little bit of trouble maybe? 
Well, you know, they if they can. Boy, Terry Loyola's defense is pretty. I well know, too. and they usually just smother people. Yeah, but, but with that, with that offense, I think the court, the quarterback, they're going to have to contain him in the pocket. Yeah, if he gets outside the pocket, they could be in trouble. Yep. Yeah, but they. So. But that offense, I'll take could Lo- cause some problems. I'll take Loyola, but I, that's another game I'm very intrigued by. Yes, Edwardsville at York again. York having a really good year. Uh, Mike Mike Fitzgerald has definitely got that program on the rise. Edwardsville scares the bejesus out of me because Joe, I think they're really good. Yes. Um, we mentioned Lincoln Way East and, and Warren. I, I'm going to take East, but I am very, very nervous about it. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to take East also. Yes. Not going to lie. One of the best games I think, regardless of regardless of class, could be Maine South and Barrington. They both do a lot of the same things. Very similar offensively. Uh, a lot of talent. Both can play defense. Both will make big stops. Maine South is so good in the playoffs. I, I got to yeah. take the Hawks to get it. And, and again, that'll be a great game. If if it goes the other way, I won't be shocked. That darn Dave and Sarah just seems to find a way in the yes. playoffs. They really do. 7A Normal Community at Glenbard East. I mean, more often than not, Normal should blow them out. I just don't think they're going to. I think, I think Normal got a wake-up call having to beat Bradley in yeah. overtime. Yes. And Bradley gave them everything they could handle and then some. Uh, again, it, to me, it comes down to how tested is normal. I was just going to say. How, I don't know. But I don't know if Glenn Bart East is that team. I don't think they are. Yeah. We'll see. I would go at normal community. Uh, we talked Downers North and Lincoln Way West. Again, I, I just think North gets the win there. Batavia, Hananega, this could be a 40-point game. Yes. It very well could be. Uh, Hananega again, solid program. They just haven't faced anyone as good as this team. No. And Quincy is probably a little bit more intriguing to me than the Batavia game, but Joe, come on. These two have been on a path to get back at each yes. other all year long. I, I think, think it's I'll know where you'll be next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, could very well be. I, I, I think you'll, th- those, those two want to fulfill that destiny and beat the bejesus out of each other in the semifinal. 6A guys, um, Mr. Belvedere North. Still fighting at Lake Zurich, and their season will end at Lake Zurich. Yeah, Lake Zurich's pretty good. Geneva at Cary Grove. Interesting game. Uh, Cary Grove, double, triple, triple option, run the ball. Cary Grove defensively scares me a little bit against Geneva. I think Geneva, if they find any kind of success slowing down that option game, they're going to win. So I, I'll take Geneva, but that could be interesting. East St. Louis, Kankakee, again. If the quarterback quarterback's is healthy, healthy, it changes things. If he's not as if, if he's not the quarterback I saw in, in week nine against Crete, if he's a little dinged up, I think that makes a big difference in that ball game. I, I'm going to go with East St. Louis on the road. I, ju- I just think the Flyers are too tough there. Glenwood hosting Washington again. Daryl Crouch, head coach of Washington, in his final season, trying to go out with a winner. I hope he gets it. Chatham very young, all sophomores and juniors on Chatham this year. Good team. They're putting up big points. So basically, guys, you got a team that hasn't allowed much of anything in Washington has played really good defense against the Chatham team. Washington is really good. Strange things happen down at Glenwood Chatham, though. I know. Strange things. I know. So uh, to me, that's almost more of a coin toss. 5A. Let's see. Take a looky here in 5A. Talk Morgan Park, Wheaton, St. Francis, Naz, and and Mundelein, and Karma will be World War III. Uh, Jolie Catholic Morris again. Joe, you got a you got a winner for this game, or? Well, I've been on that Morris bandwagon at that train all year. I think but we I'm, all have. I'm, I'm, I'm my Spit loyalties it out, Joe. lie. My loyalties lie with the Hilltoppers. Okay, so you had to be watching. You had to be watching to see Joe. Very, very. Close. This is going to be a great game, though. Yes, looking forward to it. Uh, so uh, again, should be fantastic. And then uh, again, we're going to have Tyler Plants coming up, Providence and Highland. And Joe, I just like Providence chances. I, well, I, I'm, I'm going to, my, Evan and I did the Troy Triad and Highland is track me in that, in that, um, <laughs> the track meet. Yeah. Well, that was just track meet was one way. Yes. Um, I just think the physicality of Providence is going to do the same thing yeah. to Highland as Joey Catholic did to Troy Triad. I really do. We will see. All right. We're going to step aside and take one more break. When we come back, we will be joined by the head coach of the Providence Catholic Celtics, Tyler Plants. You are listening to the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340. 
WJOL, Will County's News, Talk Sports. Hi, this is State Farm Agent John Wright. Every team knows the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I can help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score savings by combining your home and auto with me, State Farm Agent John Wright. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, John Wright, at 815-725-5052 today. A part of our community's rich tradition, St. Peter Evangelical Lutheran Church at 310 North Broadway Street in Joliet has been sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ for over 165 years and has the nation's longest running continuous Sunday morning broadcast beginning in 1926. Reverend David Totsky, pastor of St. Peter's, invites you to join them in worship every Sunday for their divine service in person at 9 a.m. or on their radio broadcast at 11 a.m. here on 1340 WJOL. There's nothing more important than family. That's why we at Farkas Funeral Home strive to put our families first. Our facility is designed to bring you the comforts of home as you celebrate the life of a loved one. We understand how important this time is for your family, so we only service one family at a time to give you all the privacy you and your family will need. Our facility is equipped with a large parking lot to accommodate all of your guests, a large kitchen, and a bright and open layout of the facility to give you all the comforts of home. Stop in and visit us on the corner of Jefferson and Essington in Joliet or at FarkasFuneralHome.com. Hi, this is Scott Trout of Cordell & Cordell. If you're a dad who is facing divorce, there are extra layers of stress that may include stereotypes and assumptions. No two situations are the same. Our legal experience and dedication prepare us for whatever legal challenges we face together. You need a partner you can count on. For more than 30 years, Cordell & Cordell has represented men in divorce. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell & Cordell's Springfield area attorneys. 2815 Old Jacksonville Road, Suite 103, Springfield, Illinois, 62704. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. We're as stupid as ever. Your official home for Joliet and Will County Sports is 1340 WJOL. And welcome back. It is the quarterfinal edition. And yes, we are as stupid as ever here on 1340 WJOL. This is Pigskin Preview. Thanks for joining us. Edgy Tim along with the coach, Joe Rodigaro. Evan Bredesen spinning the dials. And Joe, got to go out to the phone lines. Joined by the head man in charge of your Providence Catholic Celtics. His name is Tyler Plants, and uh, he joins us on the, over the phone. And coach, great to have you back on. And this time of year, if we're talking football. It means you're doing good things. So congratulations and welcome to the quarterfinals. Well, I appreciate that, but I think I, I fit in more with the, uh, the stupid as ever. I think that's more where I, where <laughs> well, I would, we'll put you uh, right in that category with us. Myself, it's all good. Sure. It's all good. Yeah, that's our new slogan for next year, so we're pretty <laughs> excited about it, actually. Finally, we finally oh, found dude, a slogan that, that, for, oh, that fits describes us, us. Fits us to a T. Yep. <laughs> how, oh, beautiful. Beautiful, how, beautiful. how has your week gone? How has practice progressed? Give us an update. Really good, really good. I mean, the guys have been playing hard. I mean, it's nice to kind of get that extra day um, playing on a Saturday. Um, 
and the guys are just excited. I mean, it, that's the best part where um, they have a really good understanding of what we want to do on offense, defense, special teams. Um, and then like just the sweat equity and the time put in and, and uh, the relationship built like during the course of a year where it's like you see the guys on your team where you see your family and uh, like that X factor, I think is the beautiful part about the playoffs where it's cold and it's dark yeah. um, and it's hard and our bodies are hurting, but it's like, you're doing this for something bigger than yourself. And you're really kind of starting to see that from a, uh, from the team on a day-to-day basis, which has been really exciting. So, so we've had, we obviously we've been talking a lot about JC and Morris. It's a game in the week we're going to cover this week and the history between those two. And, and when I think of those games and, and, I, and I think of the history, I think about Providence as well. And, the thing that's always amazed me, Tyler, and it goes way before you and, and now even during your reign here, boy, something happens with Providence Catholic in the South, in, in the playoffs. I, I don't know if you want to call it magic or whatever you want to call it, but, you know, I mean, we've seen this with Seth's teams, we've seen this with Cog's teams, and we're seeing it with your teams. Boy, it truly is a second season. How how does that happen? I mean, I hate to say it's magic, but, there you know, I, there's a lot of hard work behind that magic, but... You got to admit it's 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 pretty something special that you guys for whatever reason seem to find another gear in the postseason. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it's a testament to the coaching staff. I mean, a lot of the guys that we have here they work hard. I mean, they um, some of these guys that we had from week zero in the summer to where they are now, um, it's pretty incredible what a lot of our coaches are able to do with just a constant um, focus on blocking and tackling. Like, how do we? how do we take care of the fundamentals and get really good at the fundamentals where people start obsessing with opponents or obsessing with scheme. It's um, how do you get really good at the basics, at the fundamentals of your job of uh, just being a disciplined football player. And I think that takes a little bit of time. And a lot of guys that we have too at Providence, like we want guys to, to go play other sports. So these guys are coming off baseball. Um, so they have a couple of weeks going into the season. Um, so it's not like, hey, you're only playing football, you're lifting, and then you're studying, and da, da, da. No, like, go compete. Go compete for a school. Take pride in Providence. Um, and then we'll come see. We'll come get it all squared away when it really matters in the fall. And then the other thing is there's, there, like, there's tough kids that come here. They're tough, right. resilient, badass kids who uh, – uh, there's a reason that we have all these state championships here, especially in football and wrestling, and that's – and as guys that just put their nose down and go to work when stuff gets hard, they don't flinch. Um, they lean on each other. And, and that's something that Seth built and Cogs built and that I'm trying to carry on where, um, it's 22 guys playing ball. And I know on obviously on the rivals, I'm sure that Providence isn't the, uh, the school that has the guys, the most five stars or four stars or even stars, um, for that matter. Um, but 22 guys to play the game together. Um, and then at the drop of the hat, uh, somebody gets hurt. We've, we've kind of been uh, stung by the injury bug a little bit this year. Um, but guys that know the game, love the game, study and um, work their butts off there in JV to make sure that when their chance comes, they're, they're ready. Um, so I think a testament of just the culture of this place um, is why we've been able to have success. I like magic. I think it works better. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Magic and luck. I will take that. Any oh, you got to have luck, Tyler. You know yeah. that. You got to have luck for sure. Uh, yeah. You give me anything. I'll take anything you get. Prayers, luck. Shoot. <laughs> you know, last week, you know, I, again, I've done maybe three of your games. Um, and I, I know there's been some shifting with the offensive line, you know, late, late in the year. It seems like you got a nice combination right now. I think you rushed for over 300 yards against Hillcrest last week. And um, I think kudos would go to Tommy Lenahan. I think, believe he's still the offensive line coach. And, but it seems like yes. the offensive line is getting to that point right now where they have confidence in, in the guys, uh, the running backs have confidence in the guys running the football. Yes, without a doubt. I mean, syncing up the running backs and the old line has been huge. Um but yeah, again, most importantly, testament to Tommy Lenahan, a guy who's uh, guy. a Providence legend. Yep, legend. Most starts in the history of Providence football. I think he's got seven state championships um, between football and wrestling, um, and just bleeds the place. I mean, that's a guy who, again, I look up to. Who's been a huge, a huge, huge resource for me, and a guy who's really kept uh, 
kept the operation running. So um, to have a guy like him in the program who really bleeds green um, and loves it, I mean, I can the boys the boys couldn't be more thankful to be able to work with him on a day to day basis. I couldn't be more thankful to work with him on a day to day basis. Um, and then, yeah, again, just him. He's got a special way of being able to work with each kid individually and to, and then also being able to make uh, all five guys see a defense with one set of eyes. He's really done a special job and again, testament to the kids where uh, between injuries and some guys uh, choosing to do different things, we found five and a couple other extra blockers who they know it. Like we're starting to get on the board and they can talk it back to me or they'll come into me on Monday. Hey coach, I watch some tape. I'm like, Oh shoot. You guys are not spending Sunday you're actually watching the game. Hey coach, we like this. Um, here's our combinations. Actually, I know that we've been blocking it like this, but the way they play this, we need to change it up. We're thinking, and like, it almost brings a tear to my eyes when you see guys just love the game and know the game and really start to, uh, put their own spin on what we're doing. Um, as, as far as Highland is concerned, I know that, um, They've shown some big playability. I know. I know they can do a little bit of everything. Kind of. What's the take, and what can your fans expect out of the Bulldogs on Saturday? Oh, uh, just a great team. I mean, they're uh, they got one loss on a year really early in the season. They've made some adjustments. They've got they've got some skill players who can make some plays. Um, they do a lot of good things on offense um, between formations, um, adjustments, unbalanced stuff, motions. Um, have a couple of really, uh, good skill players over there that can make some plays, um, solid up front and defensively. They've, they've done a really good job over there too. Um, where they've got, uh, pretty, pretty strong front, um, a really solid back half. So just figure out a way to kind of attack. That's been, been the focus of our week too. You, you go against teams and, and again, you're running the teams from Southern Illinois. And, and I think one of the things that, that always seems to either be a surprise or something that. They haven't seen and something that you get tested on. It seems like every week is a, is a lot, just a lot different level of physicality. Is that fair? Um, I think that's, that's something we pride ourselves on. Um, so I hope that's uh, something we can, we can show them on Saturday for sure. No doubt about it. Um, health wise, team wise, you're okay. Yeah. 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 Healthy guys are feeling good. It's, um, good. it's uh, it's been encouraging where, um, Again, we're obviously practice is getting a little bit shorter just because they're. I don't have to read a play, repeat a play forty five times. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, because <laughs> I'm that guy. Right? Yeah, it's okay. Play, but um, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, they're really starting to come come into their own. I mean, guys are playing fast. Guys are still flying to the ball again, and he, we're still lifting throughout the course of the year. I think that's been a huge advantage. We're we're getting stronger as the season progresses. Um, so I mean, we are. Uh, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, yeah I, think so I, I think so too. I, I think we agree. <laughs> there, well, I, I like where you guys are at right now. And again, it's it's great. It's great to see you guys continue to just roll. And yeah, it just seems like you're getting better every week, coach. And you can't answer much more than that. Yes, that's right. exactly it. If we can just get a little bit better to learn something, work on one new thing every day. Um, that's all we ask out of those guys. And hopefully by week, uh, wherever week we are at this point. Uh, we're a little bit better than we were when we started. How's the baby? He is awesome. He's <laughs> awesome. That's been that's been the one thing that's taken me away from tape. Oh yeah, like hundred percent. I'm like, what time is it? I got to get home. I got to I got to bathe the kid. Uh, he's got a little bit of a cough right now, so like I was oh. like almost in tears. I'm like, what did we do wrong? Um, <laughs> you broke him. Uh, <laughs> you broke him. Right, right, come on, please don't. Um, but uh, but he's on his he's on his way to recovery here. But he's been awesome. Good. He's got a 99 percentile head, which definitely came from the plant side of the family. <laughs> um, so, so he's uh, he is uh, he's a beauty. I couldn't be uh, awesome. It's been, a, it's been an absolute blessing. That is so that so is excited. that is God's way of reminding you what's really important. That's Trust exactly me. Exactly right. I'll we all right learned now, it, Tyler. Coach. We've all gone through it, and and you are right now. And and believe me, that'll. That'll humble you more than just about anything else in this world. Yes. Without a doubt. And also just like how much I appreciate my wife for everything she does. Yeah. Where oh yeah. She, she, uh, really has had to put on every hat possible. Like she was even cutting the grass the other day and I felt I was devastated, but, uh, it was uh, just the, the way different hats she's put on and how she, uh, does everything 
in her power to, to allow me to do something that I love is a, uh, is really a testament to her too. So it's Tyler, been, Tyler, take it from me. There's a special place up in heaven for coaches wives. I'm telling no you doubt. right now. Oh my gosh, you tell me, right? No You're doubt. It's a, uh, it takes a different breed there too. Um, it sure does. But, uh, again, couldn't appreciate her anymore either. You got it. All right, pal. Best of luck yes, Saturday. Good luck, okay? good luck, Tyler. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys for having me on. Anytime. Bye. All right. Tyler Plants joins us from Providence. And again, great to talk to him. And Joe, he's got it going. Yeah, I, I just. It's, it's magic, Joe. I'm telling you. Yeah, and, and you and you said it, and I had it written down here, and I was going to talk to him about it, but you mentioned it. The physicality of a Joliet Catholic it's in just Providence different. It's different. compared to what they have what they have seen and what they have played is going to be the the Providence fans are going to see it. Yeah, they're they're, just, they're going to see what the Joliet Catholic fans saw last week, and then they're going to see it this week against this Highland team. What did I What did I tell you when we talked about our teams this week? And who did I tell you I thought I had the best chance of winning? Providence. Providence. Yeah, I agree. I, I think they're in the best spot right now. I think Providence again. I will give them some things to be concerned about, but I just think this team is playing well. And I think, again, when, when teams from that conference, that Mississippi Valley Conference, come up here, they don't fare very well up north. Not at all. So we shall see. Well, guys, boy, I tell you what, we're wrapping it up, and uh, we're wrapping up the season pretty soon. Yeah, it, pretty we're soon. getting, uh, what, one next week, and then uh, we don't come back Thanksgiving. No. And then we're back for the wrap. So – well, uh, we got like two shows left. Wow. wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Wow. And, and and we really won't miss each other that first Thursday. No, we will a little bit, but uh, all right. want to thank everyone. want to thank our coaches for joining us. want to thank uh, Jeff Reigns. I did get a text from Rob Zavonar. He apologizes greatly. So I told him no problem. We'll catch up with him next week. Yep. Uh, thanks to Jake Jaworski and Tyler Plants as well for joining us. Thanks to everybody watching us. Hey, yep. great audience. Thank you for watching us, even though the Bears are on. I appreciate that. Our audience numbers really didn't watch drop. Us the yeah, Bears. who wants to get miserable with the Bears? You can get <laughs> miserable with us every Thursday That's night. Right. So, again, for Coach Joe, for Ivan Bredesen, I'm Ed Edgy Tim. Thanks, everybody. This has been the quarterfinal edition of Pigskin Preview here on 1340 WJOL. Wakani's new sports talk. Good night, everybody. Official rules for WJOL AM.